In this video, uh, we look at another type of equation to solve, and it looks something like this. If we have some sort of a coefficient, which is a number of some sort, then we have x to the n, and then we have the nth derivative of y, plus then we have another coefficient, numerical coefficient of some sort, x to the n minus 1, y to the n minus 1. You can see the power of the x is matching the order of the derivative throughout the whole equation. And it doesn't matter what the other side is, we'll call it g of x, just to give it a name over there. These type of equations are the uh, Cauchy-Euler equations. This side, we'll work first with g of x equal to zero, and then we'll work the problems uh, where you have to find a particular solution. So let's do an example. Here we have x squared y double prime plus 5xy prime plus 3y equals zero. So we'll start with the uh, the homogeneous kind, and then we'll work our way up from there. But notice that the power of x matches the order of the derivative. So x squared y double prime, x to the 1, y prime, x to the 0, you don't know y. And the thing that you want to use, instead of e to some power, let y equal x to the m. So here I'm going to try to figure out the letter m with that. Let's go ahead and throw it into the equation. I have x squared, and then I'm going to take the second derivative of x to the m, and we by now we know that that's m times m minus 1, x to the m minus 2, plus I have 5x, times y prime, that'll be mx to the m minus 1, and then finally plus 3x to the m. Now the reason why this works is because all the powers of x will become x to the m. So I have x to the m times m times m minus 1 plus 5, well, let me reset. I'm going to take x to the m times 5m plus x to the m times 3, and that's equal to 0. Let me factor out the x to the m. I have m times m minus 1 plus 5m plus 3, and we set that equal to 0. Now, just like before, it, while x can be 0, you know, we were working before, we had e to a power, and we knew that that could never be 0. But here, when you factor out the x to them, here's what we have. Now, while x itself, <coughs> just being x to the m, does not prevent it from being equal to 0, that's a little bit different here. We're going to require, then, that x not equal to 0, because I'm going to divide it out in the next step. So I'll have m times m minus 1 plus 5m plus 3 equals 0, and we'll assume that x is greater than 0. Recall, if x is not going to be 0, then we're going to have to pick an interval, either negative infinity to 0 or 0 to infinity. I choose 0 to infinity. You'd be crazy to choose negative values. Anyways, let me go ahead and multiply this all through. I have m squared minus m plus 5m plus 3 equals 0. And so I have m squared plus 4m plus 3 equals 0. That looks like m plus 1 times m plus 3 equals 0. And we find that m equals negative 1 comma negative 3. So that gives us our solution. Why? Since this is a homogeneous equation, uh, y is the same as yc. I'll get c1 x to the first power plus c2 x to the third power. 
So what we're going to do is kind of proceed the same way we did before. We'll do a variety of equations. I'll have repeated roots. I'll have non-real roots, things like that for m, and then we'll show how to deal with them. For our next example, we have x squared y double prime plus 3xy prime minus 4y equals 0. You're going to do the same thing. y is going to equal x to the m. And when you end up plugging it in here, you'll get used to just doing this. The y double prime will give you the m times m minus 1. Then you'll have 3m minus 4, and that will equal 0. Let me multiply this all out. m squared minus m plus 3m minus 4 equals 0. So we get m squared plus 2m minus 4 equals 0. This doesn't factor, so I'm going to go to the quadratic formula. m will equal negative 2 plus and minus the square root of, let me see, 4 minus 4 times, my a is 1, my c is negative 4. And we'll divide that by 2. So we get negative 2 plus and minus. It looks like the square root of 20 all over 2. So m will equal negative 2 plus and minus 2 radical 5 over 2. And simplified, m will be negative 1 plus and minus radical 5. So our answer then will be y equals c1 x to the negative 1 plus radical 5 plus c2 x to the minus 1 minus radical 5. For the next example I have x squared y double prime minus 7xy prime plus 41y equals 0. Same game as before. I'll have m times m minus 1. Remember, y equals x to the m is the way we set up our solution. Minus 7m plus 41 equals 0. And so this gives me m squared minus m minus 7m plus 41. That's equal to 0. m squared minus 8m plus 41 equals 0. And I'll go to the quadratic formula. m equals 8 plus and minus 64 minus 4 times a is 1 times 41 all over 2. 8 plus and minus. Inside of here I have 64 minus 164. So that's negative 100 inside of the root, the square root that is. So that would be negative 8 plus and my, or 8 plus and minus 10i over 2, or 4 plus and minus 5i. So our answer will be y equals c1 x to the 4 plus 5i plus c2 x to the 4 minus 5i. Now, how do we get these i's out of the system? How do I convert like I did before? The way we do it is the following. We can write x to the 4 plus 5i will equal x to the 4th times x to the 5i. I'm going to leave x to the 4th alone. But for this other part, I'm going to rewrite it as e to the ln x to the 5i. You've probably seen this a hundred times. Uh, I'll keep going. x to the fourth e. I'm going to bring the 5i down front of the natural log. It'll give me 5i ln x. What I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to rewrite it just to make it patently clear. Let me remind you the formula that e to the i times theta equals cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. So whatever is attached to i, I'm going to use this formula with. 
So over here, to make it plainly obvious, I have i times 5 ln x. The 5 ln x is like my theta. And so what this gives me then is x to the fourth. I can write this as cosine of 5 ln x plus i times sine 5 ln x. And then we can do the same thing for x to the 4 minus 5i, except it's going to be x to the 4th. And then this time I'll have e to the i times negative 5 ln x. And then you can plug that right in, x to the 4th, cosine of negative 5 ln x plus i sine of, phi of negative 5 ln x now this is all okay because remember I'm assuming that x is greater than 0 for all of these problems so all these natural logarithms are defined and uh, cosine is an even function so it squashes the negative sine is an odd function so I'll be able to pull it out front Now, just as before, I have two equations. If you look and see what we did when we had the same situation involving E, we were able to say that our solutions for this, instead of the Y I had before, I'll write X to the fourth, that's the thing out front, instead of an E, I'll have this. And then I'll have C1 cosine of 5 ln X plus C2 sine of 5 ln x. And that will be our solution. Now let's do some non-homogeneous ones. So for my next example, I have x squared y double prime minus 2xy prime plus 2y equals x to the fourth e to the x. So this is a non-homogeneous equation. With these things, I'll still I'm still going to work the part that um, gives me the homogeneous answer. So we're still going to have m times m minus one minus two m plus two equals zero. So then we'll have m squared minus m minus two m plus two equals zero m squared minus 3m plus 2 equals 0. That factors m minus 2 times m minus 1 equals 0. And so m equals 2 and 1. In other words, our complementary solution looks like c1x to the 1 plus c2x squared. So that'll be part of our answer. Now, of course, the hard part is finding a particular solution to this equation. So the first thing we want to do is to divide by x squared. So this now I'm going to work for the particular solution. For y sub p, we're going to divide. If we're dividing by x squared, it's because it's the leading coefficient. So I will get y double prime minus 2 over x y prime plus 2 over x squared y and that will equal x squared e to the x. As I mentioned before my favorite form of solution is the variation of parameters so that's what we're going to try to do. y sub p will be u1 our first solution is x there's our y1 plus u2 second solution is x squared. These are going to be a lot more enjoyable to differentiate um, than things that just don't go away. So we'll need to uh, use the equation that we had for u1 prime. That's where we'll have u1 prime of x 
plus u2 prime of x squared will equal 0. But then the, the one with the derivatives will have u1 prime plus 2x u2 prime will equal the resulting function. That's x squared e to the x. And remember, when I look at these such uh, system of equations, I'm going to put a 1 here just to remind you. We will replace the first column by the result column. So I'll have 0 x squared e to the x. And then I'll put in the y column, or if you will, the second variable column, x squared 2x. And that's divided by the Ronskian. So the Ronskian, of course, is just the coefficients all together, x1, x squared, and 2x. Now when I multiply this through, that part's 0, but when I do the negative of the diagonal, I get negative x to the fourth, e to the x. Down here, I get 2x squared minus x squared. That'll be x squared. Now this is not equal to 0 because x is positive. Um, I can cancel out the squares and end up with negative x squared e to the x. That's u prime, or u1 prime. Then u2 prime will equal, same deal, this time I'm going to leave the first column alone, x1, but I'll replace the second column with the result, 0x squared e to the x, and divide by the Ronskian, which we now know to be x squared. So I multiply this through, it looks like I'm going to get x cubed e to the x, with the other directional 0, and it looks like x e to the x. In order to solve these things, u1 will equal negative integral x squared e to the x. You're going to have to use integration by parts twice. So I'm going to do b will equal x squared dv will equal 2x dx, w will equal e to the x dx, that's dw, sorry, w will equal e to the x. So this, don't forget this negative here, negative x squared e to the x, then I have minus the product of these things, the integral of the product of these things, but there was a minus out front here, so I get plus 2 integral x e to the x dx. And I'll apply uh, integration by parts again. So I'll have v equals x, dv will equal dx, dw will equal e to the x dx, w will equal e to the x. So the negative x squared e to the x is just hanging. Don't forget this 2 that's out front here. Now I'm going to have x times e to the x, so I'll have plus 2x e to the x. And then I'll subtract uh, dx times e to the x, the integral of that. So I'll have minus 2 integral e to the x dx. And I'm ready to finish it off here. Remember, this is u1 equals negative x squared e to the x plus 2x e to the x minus 2 e to the x. So I got u1 locked away, sort of underline it. Now u2 was x e to the x, u2 prime. So that'll be the integral of x e to the x dx. And that's precisely what I did up here. So that'll equal x e to the x. And when you minus this part, you're going to get the integral of e to the x anyways. So we get that. You might find it easier if, if answers have e to the x and then factor out the e to the x's. For example, I might write this as uh, e to the x times negative x squared plus 2x minus 2. You might find it easier. I don't know what's coming down the pipe on this problem, but I'm just that's just something I've gotten used to doing. e to the x times x minus 1. Now let's do our answer. Our answer for y sub p, that'll be u1 y1 plus u2 y2. And so my u1 is that stuff. 
e to the x times negative x squared plus 2x minus 2. The y1 was x. My u2 then is e to the x times x minus 1. My y2 was x squared. I'm going to multiply everything out and see what happens. So I'll factor out a big e to the x out front. Then I'll have negative x cubed plus 2x squared minus 2x uh, plus x cubed. That's nice. Minus x squared. And let's see where that ends us up at. e to the x. The x cubes cancel. I notice the 2x squared minus x squared will just be x squared. So x squared minus 2x. There's my y sub p. And then my answer y, remember it's always y sub c plus y sub p. This will equal y sub c was c1x plus c2x squared. And our y sub p is e to the x times x squared minus 2x. Full solution. Finally, my last example, and this will cover a type that we haven't done yet. I'll have 4x squared, y double prime plus y, that's equal to 0. And so I'll go to the m's, 4m times m minus 1 plus 1 equals 0, 4m squared minus 4m plus 1 equals 0. This factors 2m minus 1 squared equals 0. So we have a repeated solution. m equals 1 half and 1 half. So when you do your y sub c, well, just y, I'm sorry, I don't have a y here. This is a homogeneous equation. When you do your y, you're going to get c1 x to the 1 half, and you might think that you should then get x times x to the 1 half. That is not the way this works. Not at all. Stop for a moment here. I already know this part right here. I don't know. So I do know let y1 equal x to the 1 half. To find a second solution, Use our reduction of order. And you'll set y equal u y1, or if you will, that'll be u times x to the 1 half. Now, let's go back to the equation. In fact, this will be y sub 2. I'll use that throughout. We have 4x squared y double prime plus y equals 0. As with anything else, you're going to divide by 4x squared y double prime plus 1 over 4x squared y equals 0. <clears throat> now let me go ahead and plug my y sub 2 in that is of this form. So y sub 2 double prime plus 1 over 4x squared y sub 2 equals 0. Let's plug those in. Um, off to the side, I guess I can do y sub 2 prime, that'll equal u prime x to the 1 half, plus 1 half u x to the negative 1 half. Take the second derivative, I'll get u prime prime x to the 1 half, plus u prime, oops, I made a mistake, plus 1 half u prime x to the negative one half. That's the product rule for these two pieces. Then I'll work the product rule here. So I'll get plus, when I do u prime here, I'll get one half u prime x to the negative one half. And then finally, I'll take the derivative of that x and end up with negative one fourth u x to the negative three halves. And I'll simplify a little bit here. u double prime x to the 1 half 
plus, I have two of these things, so I'm going to have u prime x to the negative one half minus one fourth u x to the negative three halves. Let's go ahead and take this stuff and plug it into here. So I'll get u double prime x to the one half plus u prime x to the negative one half minus one fourth u x to the negative three halves plus one over four x squared times y2 and that is u x to the one half and that's supposed to equal zero. Uh, to make life a little bit easier I'm going to cancel these x's into each other and you'll see that my u disappears. u double prime x to the one half plus u prime x to the negative one half minus one fourth u x to the negative three halves plus one fourth u x to the negative three halves. So those will cancel. And you suspect this is what's supposed to happen. I'll have u double prime x to the one half plus u prime x to the negative one half equals zero. And the game that we always played with these is to let w equal u prime, and this becomes w prime x to the one half plus w x to the negative one half. So let me divide by x to the one half, w prime plus w x to the negative one equals zero. And of course, you want e, you want your integrating factor, int back. That'll be e to the integral x to the negative one dx, and as we know by now, that's e to the ln x, which is just x. Let's see what happens when I multiply the equation by that. I get x w prime plus w equals zero. Of course, this is a perfect derivative now, perfect differential. So you end up with something like this, x times w. So you get x w equals some sort of a constant. Remember, the constants won't matter on this. We're simply looking for a particular solution anyways. w will equal c x to the negative one. That means u prime equals cx to the negative 1. So u will be the integral of that. Or that just is c ln x. Remember, in all these things, x is positive, so I don't have to worry about anything. And you don't need the constants here for a particular solution. We're going to use u equals just ln x. And so... Our solution then, y, was equal to, we had a c1, and it was x to the 1 half, but then our c2 was, oh, don't forget, um, y2 equals uy1, uh, u was, of course, ln x times x to the 1 half. I think when I write this, I'll write x to the 1 half ln x looks a little bit better there in that format. So when you have repeated roots, you don't add multiples or powers of x to it. You actually add powers of ln of x. So if, say, m1, m1, dot, 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 m1 is a repeated root of the auxiliary equation, and then the complementary function, I should call it the complementary solution. is, so you're going to get y sub c, in our case, if, if it's a homogeneous equation, then you don't have to worry about this sub c, but you'll get c1 x to the m1 plus c2 x to the m1 times ln of x 
plus c3 x to the m1 ln squared of x. That's the thing that's going to be growing as you go along. Go all the way down until you get to the last one, c sub. Uh, let's say that this happens k times. So then we'll have c sub k x to the m1 ln the k minus 1 ln to the k minus 1 of x. So that takes care of repeated roots in completion.